Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the latest in our series of Doha debates coming to you from the Gulf state of Qatar and sponsored by the Qatar Foundation. Out of all the Arab states to be hit by the pro-democracy wave this year, Syria is putting up the stiffest resistance. President Assad's forces are said to have killed well over three and a half thousand people protesting at his rule and the number is rising by the day. He promises political reforms, but somehow they don't appear. He promises the Arab League to remove tanks from the streets, but they're still there. To let in foreign observers, but they're still excluded. So should he step down, or is the president still a vital player in a turbulent and dangerous region? Our motion tonight takes the opposite view. This House believes that Syria's President Assad should resign. Our panel, of course, represents both views. Speaking for the motion, Obeda Hanas, a Syrian politician who's a member of the Syrian National Council and the National Action Group for Syria. And with him, Emil Hakayem, Senior Fellow for Regional Security at the International Institute for Strategic Studies in Bahrain. Against the motion, Amar Wakaf. He's a management consultant and member of the Syrian Social Club, a pro-government group supporting reform based in London and Kamal Wazne, political analyst and founder of the Center of American Strategic Studies, a regional think tank based in Beirut. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our panel. So now let me first ask Obeda Hanas to speak for the motion. Thank you, Tim. For 11 years, we had to put up with a president whose only qualification was that he was the son of a dictator who crushed our society, liberty, and rights for 30 years. Many Syrians believed that the international community was implicit in the smooth power trans uh, transition back in 2000. Or let me put it this way, the Passover of a republic from a father to his son. But many others believe that it was our responsibility to regain our rights. Modernity, economic development, stability, etc., were all used along the way to justify Bashar's rule. But after another lost decade on all these fronts, the Syrian people, who got nothing in return for their silence, but more detentions, torture, and killings, took the lead and revolted against one of the worst tyrannies in the region. They exposed a once called Western educated doctor for what he is, a butcher willing to do anything to remain in power. When a ruler faces protests as wide, as wide and painful as the Syrian revolution, this is a cry for help. Have you asked yourselves why people are willing to go out and protest every day and die in front of tanks and refuse to go back home before their demands are met, what kind of life do they lead under such a regime? 5,000 heroes fell over the last eight months. 40,000 were wounded, 35,000 were detained. How many more of us should Bashar al-Assad kill before he goes? If you think he can still stay after all this, then try to convince the mothers of 300 killed children. No throne is in the world is worth the life of one of civilians. I think Bashar al-Assad must resign immediately. Abed al-Nahas, thank you very much indeed. Um, you say Syrians took the lead and revolted. How many Syrians? 1% of the population, perhaps? Tiny, tiny percentage there. 150,000 people, maybe, in all. What about the others? Don't they have a say, the majority? Of course they have he a say. He still has strong support in the country? Well, they, ha they don't have the means to have their say. That's the problem. If this regime... Well, they are having up, their say. They're turning out in demonstrations pretty frequently to support him. Well, we believe these uh, demonstrations are not true. They are forced to go out. They have they to go out from their schools. They can't all be forced to go out. I mean, even the American Council on Foreign Relations says he still commands a strong and loyal army, enjoys support from the business elite in Syria's two largest cities, in Damascus and Aleppo, also retains the support of many, especially the minorities, who fear what will happen if he goes. That's but quite a lot of support in the country. No, it's not. And uh, you're calling Gailey for no, his overthrow? He, if he's so confident, why doesn't he open up and have free elections? 
It's very easy. He can open up and have free elections. He can actually accept observers to come in, accept the free media to go in. Why isn't he not doing so? He's hiding something. You think seriously that the day Assad steps down, which is what you're recommending, that some kinder, gentler figure is going to emerge from the wings, who's going to respect human rights suddenly, who's going to give the people all they've been looking for, the freedom. Do you really think that's in the wings? Doesn't look like it, does it? This is the end of Superman uh, hero uh, figures. Yeah, but if you get something we, worse than Superman, what if you get something worse than Superman? No, anything will be better than this. Why should president. anything? It could be worse. No, it's not. I'm, How do you I'm know? How you, do you because know? Because so far, for eight months, he's been pushing people into the direction of civil war, and they have refused We're to do We're already so. seeing the Free Syrian Army posting forced confessions on the internet from captured security officers. Are these the kind of people you want to take Assad's no, place? The, the Free Syrian Army are people who defected from his army. And they had to obey, they Mounting disobeyed the orders. sectarian retribution, that's what well, we're seeing already, no. according to international observers. That's what you want, that's the future? We, we never you experienced paint? sectarianism in, in Syria before Assad. So Syrian society has always been united, it has always been open. We don't have a problem with Bashar because of his background okay. or because of his ideology. Right. We have a problem because of his actions. Okay, Abed Nahas, thank you very much indeed. Now let me ask... Amar Wakaf to speak against the motion, please. Okay, uh, good evening to you all. I'm going to start by a piece of news that may be shocking to some of you. President Bashar al-Assad still enjoys the support of the majority of Syrians. I like to call them the tacit majority, a majority from whom or about whom we hear very little. Uh, if anyone is interested in a proof, the proof is already there, it's not very hard to find. The president is still in office, his government unlike what happened in many places in the region, is still intact. Its institutions are still functioning effectively, whether civil or military. In other words, I believe that had the Syrian people really wanted President Assad out of the office, he would have gone by now, a long time ago. Now, to elaborate more about this notion of tacit uh, majority, it does not only consist of diehard supporters of President Assad and his policies. It also consists of people who are not particularly affiliated with any political program or do not have a political preference at all. It may also consist of people who actually oppose President Assad on this or that subject, or perhaps don't like him for all subjective reasons of some sort. But they do not like what is being offered to them, and that makes them de facto supporters of President Assad. Now, this tacit majority, who I have the honor to represent this evening, do not want President Assad to resign. Reasons can be summarized in three, among any others really, but I'm going to focus on three this evening. A, this tacit majority does not, is not, does not feel secure about Syria or the future of Syria without him being around. B, the majority of Syrians are not very sure about the agenda that is being put on table. Are we serving interests of international and regional uh, uh, nature or are we serving the Syrian and national domestic interests? And third, speaking about reform, we need a strong government that is independent of regional, independent, uh, regional influence in order to have a sustainable reform. We just do not want any change. We want a sustainable reform that can go for years and years to come. That's all I have to say. Mawakaf, thank you very much indeed. Um, if they wanted him to go, he would have gone by now. You seem to pay no attention to the massive catalogue of human rights abuses that these Syrians have suffered over the years. Um, a security network that has violated their civil and political rights, arrested political and human rights activists left, right and centre. Do you think they're in a condition to speak their mind freely, apart from the brave few who go on the streets? What do you think, Syrians conduct their business any different from any other region, you know, country in the region? It's all the same here. We conduct our business somehow that is not very democratic, but that is Violating, different. as Human Rights Watch's report for last year said, the civil and political rights, security agencies, detaining people without arrest warrants, I mean, having without giving information where they are. Having lived in England for about seven years, I do know that it's not very shiny out there, but you know, defragmenting It's a little country. more than not very shiny out there. 
Well, I'm going to give you pretty, on that one. If you call a massive human rights violation not very shiny, it's a little bit more than that, isn't it? Well, are, you is an are you denying isn't it? that torture takes place on a regular basis? No, no, not at all, not at all. I mean, uh, I know. And you still think this, this is the best man for the job? Well, is it about the man or the, is it about the regime, the well, system? Well, our motion is certainly about the man. This House believes President Assad must resign. Or maybe you want to go over to that side of the argument. Yeah? No, no, not at all. But I do believe that the regime is about hundreds of thousands of employees who have conducted their business in a certain way for over decades. And changing that is not about changing the, the person who sits on top of that regime, is it? It's getting rid of some... Well, the buck stops with him, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Why I mean, not? it makes it worse. He's really? the man. He's the president. You're saying he's not in charge. Yes, he is, is in charge, and he is and the, he most, have responsibility the most for capable what person on. of changing that regime. And what his army and his security services are doing, he's shown no desire to change anything. It's not he his promised army. change from the day he came into office. It's not his army and his security forces. It's Syria's Ooh. army and Syria's Oh, and he's forces. not the Syrian president. Anymore. He is, and constitutionally, he commands the loyalty of the so army. So how come you're opening up a gap between him and the security service? You're saying he's not in charge? Of he has a constitutional... Uh, privilege of commanding those people. He's the supreme commander. That's constitutional. It's not about his army, it's the Syria's army which he commands. All right, Amar Wakaf, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Now could I ask please Emil Hakayem to speak for the motion. Thank you. It's high time for President Bashar al-Assad to resign. His use and softer image have fooled many of us for too long. We were told that he was a reformist at heart, that he faced opposition from within the system, that he cared about regional peace and stability. We can't look into Mr. Ba uh, Assad's eyes and evaluate his intentions, but we, what we can do is judge his policies and outcomes from, for which he, sh she, he should be held accountable. The Syrian people are doing just that after 41 years of Assad rule, and they're giving him a fa failing grade. But the crisis has also a regional dimension. He and his supporters' latest, most desperate defense is that Syria is the beating heart of Arabism and therefore deserves special treatment. The problem with this argument, lest anyone has forgotten, is that the millions of Arabs who took the streets this year have redefined Arabism to give it real substantive meaning, democracy, dignity, economic justice and opportunity. Assad style Arabism is lost throughout the region, not admired. Arabs reject Assad's narrative and he has no remaining appeal. Don't take it from me. Every poll shows his popularity in the Arab world to have shrunken to a minimum. The latest Brookings poll shows that 86% of Arabs support the Syrian uprising. The Zogby poll agrees with this finding and indicates that the overwhelming majority of Arabs think this is a popular revolt, not a foreign conspiracy, as Assad asserts. More than 90% of Arabs think that he can no longer govern the country. In, in, es in essence, they agree with our side of the motion. Four decades of empty, bombastic, Assad-style Arabism have not helped Syria recover the Golan Heights, or advance the Palestinian cause, or stabilize Lebanon. To the contrary. And all this has cost the Syrian people dearly. Oppression, political underdevelopment, isolation, and most recently, sectarianism. Certainly without Assad and his system, Syria can again become a beacon of prosperity, culture, and tolerance for its great and courageous people. Emil Hagayim, thank you very much indeed. It could become a beacon for that, or it could become another Iraq, couldn't it? You simply don't know. All possibilities are open, but what is... Well, there's nothing whatever to suggest even the remotest chance of a peaceful handover, is there? So far, everyone is amazed at how resilient and peaceful the, uh, the Syrian protesters have been. They've been under attack for eight months. We've seen sectarian retribution only and in the past few months. And they've been fighting back, and as I said earlier, posting forced confessions self from, from, from security we, men that they self -defense. Uh, captured. Self-defense. We, we don't have, we have only self -defense, a Self-defense, forced confessions are self-defense? I don't think so. I've never seen self-defense that resulted in a forced confession before. Well, there are extreme elements in the opposition. No it's one torture. will deny. Uh, no torture. One will the, deny same, the same thing that the human rights organizations accuse Assad of. This is, the, this is the problem with 40 years of brutality. I'm sure there are some in the... Uh, okay, in so, so all you're advocating then is to exchange one brutality with another. None at all. Which may be even worse. The, the Syrian opposition is a lot more diverse and a lot more tolerant and a lot more peaceful than the Assad regime is. We've seen well, the, uh, early this signs very hard the, the early signs are not good, are they? The early signs? 
They've been under relentless like attacks by the regime for eight months. Groups. They've been under relentless attacks by the regime for eight months, and we have seen them in most of the regions stay peaceful, utterly peaceful, and actually and attract more and more people. it's a mistake to call them people. one group, isn't it? Because no. they are deeply divided on, on major issues, well, the various opposition groups. They are asking for the same thing, which is the downfall of that regime. Yeah, but they want it in very different ways. Certainly, but for the moment, the leadership of the opposition and most Syrian activists stand by their ground. They want a peaceful revolution. And you don't think they'd settle scores in the Alawite villages in Syria? Well, the onus because is on... Because most Western observers feel that they would, at a minimum. That is the kind of retribution that they would seek. For the moment, it's the regime that's inflaming sectarian passions and actually endangering the Alawite community for the, moment, the, for the day the transition happens. It's not about the opposition going into those regions and causing death and violence. All right, Emil Hakaim, thank you very much thank indeed. You. Now, please, could I ask Kamal Wazne to speak against the motion. Uh, good evening. No one can deny that reform is needed in Syria as is needed in most of the Arab world. The current crisis highlights the impasse we are facing. What is needed? Political reform, political change, democracy, more freedom? Yes to all, but at what cost? And to what extent we are pushing the country into the unknown? Today, the Arabs voted for sanction economic sanction against Syria. It's a sad day. What's happening is too fast, too quick to pull the trigger. What do we want in Syria? Sectarian war? Rise to Islamic extremism? I have heard of many killings start based in religious beliefs. Killing, assassination. A few days ago, seven of the Air Force were killed in an ambush. What for? What was their crime? Just because there were Syrian soldiers? Today, the Middle East is facing the American withdrawal of Iraq, from Iraq. Some would say America lost Iraq. America got defeated in Iraq. And some U.S. policymaker wondering of Syria becoming the locus of a new regional proxy war between Syria ally, Iran, and the other camp, Saudi Arabia and the Persian Gulf country with the backing of the US. Yes, that is true. They need to keep Iran in check and contain. That's what they're trying. Syria today need help, need reconciliation, not sanction. No sectarian war. No country should smuggle weapons into Syria so they can have sectarian war. Could you wrap up, please? The Arab gave the Israeli initiative time since 2002, and nothing happened. Why the rush today on Syria? For that, I am not for the motion that Assad at this time should resign. We need okay. time and right. we need patience. Come on, wasn't it? Thank you very much. Um, there may be no rush for you, but you're talking about a people who, uh, with Assad's father, first of all, had between 10 and 40,000 people murdered by his security forces. Now his son, Bashar al-Assad, who's uh, killed, according to the United Nations, more than three and a half thousand people, and you say there's no hurry. Easy for you to say. People might think very differently about that. Aren't they fed up with the killings? Well, obviously, killing is, is, is not a good thing for any system around the world. What do you mean, it's what, not a good thing? It's wait, not a wait, parking wait. offence, it, it you is know? What I I'm mean, saying. it doesn't get much worse Kill. than that, does yes, it? Yes, yes, it's very true. When you murder we, your own we, people, I mean, the, the how killing, much worse can it the get? The killing is on both sides. The, the, the number that's saying 3,000, 3,500, there is killing, but that not, that not that number. There's about 800 people killed from that. How do you know? Because that's the, well, the this, regime version. Well, well this is the regime. That's the regime version. Yes, it is the regime version, and the other numbers saying also. Why there's, should they be believed? There's soldier been killed by the what they call why should, the opposition. Why should, why should they believe? They have promised every, everything that they promised has turned to dust, hasn't it? Not, the promises that Assad made to the Arab League. 
one by one have been shown to be false promises. You didn't deliver on anything. The issue that I'm really so worried about, I'm not talking about what worry I worry about is we see a sectarian war, a war that take place like what happened But you're still in, saying this in, man in is Iraq. the best man for We lost job. a million person in Iraq. I'm afraid that the situation in Syria could be like Iraq and this will spell into Lebanon and other areas. So keep, we a, so, have, so keep a guy, no, because of we your fears, wanted, keep a guy we wanted a who dialogue, abuses we wanted human reconciliation, rights and has done since time. he came in. We cannot allow things to rush. Yes, there is a problem, but that problem cannot be addressed by smuggling more weapons, by killing, by continuing killing, and by the Depends United States saying, killing, don't it? drop your weapon, continue shooting at the civilians. Depends who's doing the killing. Well, both sides. There's killing on yeah, both well, sides. And I'm saying, scale, we need dealing. We don't, side, we don't want more blood. Thousand people. Yes, I'm saying we need more time to reconcile the differences. Let's stop the killing and start the healing. That's Jamal what we're looking Wesley, for. No sign that anybody is going to reconcile any differences from the government. Thank you very much indeed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take your questions now on the motion that this House believes President Assad must resign. Lady in the second row, I think you had your hand up first. Um, Would you stand I'm up and tell us where you're from, please? I'm from Hama. Uh, my question is to Mr. Ammar. Uh, you talked about the majority being in support of President Bashar al-Assad. Then why do you feel he needs to take such a drastic measure to stay in power? What drastic measure? Dr killings, murders, madam, madam, following afraid, people abroad. Uh, you know, madam, I'm afraid you don't understand what's going on. People are getting killed. And the army is not killing peaceful demonstrators. They are shooting back at people who are shooting at them. We have one third of well, the that's casualties. Not, that's not the UN version, is it? Well, I've seen funerals of so many people. I saw the version of any observers. How, have you so seen many funerals of, of, of army personnel? 122 votes in the General Assembly yeah. calling for an end to the violence by the Syrian government. 122 votes. Do you know what the problem or, you know, stumbling block behind any Security Council resolution? It was because the West never wanted to agree that there were counter-violence rather than violence. Oh, so this is political. No, it's not political. Uh -huh. It's just about people are getting killed even and nobody you said, is Even you admitted. said, I think the phrase was, it's not that shiny over there. No, it's a lot not. of people being no, killed in a not very shiny way, I think. No, it's not, there, it's not it? shiny at all. But we are at war with some people who are back from the outside, who I are promoted uh, from the outside. Let's let the questioner come back. So is this the, same, the, is this the same way that Hafez al-Assad killed 10 to 40,000 people in Hama? Were they all armed, firing back? Wouldn't you say he was, in this sense, defending his position and wanting to stay in power the same way his son now is doing the same thing in Homs and Hama and Dara? Yeah, What's your um, response to that? First of all, I do appreciate that you are from Hama. But unfortunately for you, President Assad didn't kill 10,000 people in Hama. I disagree with the number in itself. Well, but he didn't book, kill them just here, out of the... I have a book here where the author... I disagree with the number. Here. There are no official accounts, obviously. But the I know that people were killed in Hama. Is not official? And Hama was destroyed. Yes. But <laughs> did that happen out of the blue? Do you think people in Hama were killing other people? Do you think but that was about stopping a civil war that, that could have killed, killed ten times more people, Syrians? And that gives him the right to go into a whole city and destroy it? You know, madam, that civil war that was planned could have killed 100, more, 100 times more Syrians. You know, what, what, what are we talking about What planned about civil war? What? What planned civil war? The civil war that was planned to Syria to happen just like what happened in Lebanon. You know, okay. it's about sectarian elimination. I'm, I'm going to bring That's Emil Hokayem. Everybody not, not understand. Emil Hokayem. Um, it's a bit disingenuous first to, to blame all this on a grand Western conspiracy. I mean, if we remember well, uh, uh, Secretary Clinton and Senator John Kerry were talking about Bashar al-Assad as a reformist in March, April, May, and later. And actually, the U.S. was late to come to realize how bad the situation was and that it needed to shift its position. The second thing is that back in 82, it took several weeks, if not months, for us to realize what was happening in Hama. Today, it's streaming live. We have actually videos, we have testimonies coming to us every day that showed the extent of the brutality. In fact, we, there's also Syrian soldiers serving in the army that is loyal to Bashar al-Assad who take pictures of them torturing others and, and selling them and, 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 and broadcasting their brutality in an effort to terrorize the population. But the brutality is not on one side, is it? 
I mean, there have already been Western reports. For several show, months, it was no... only on one side. No one is going to deny that the opposition I mean, it has, it, that within the opposition, there are radical elements I... that are using also sir. condemnable violence. Sir. But it is not, you cannot compare the and scale. You can, and you it's condemn still, them it, too. It is, of these, course, these people who you want to take over No one is going to, to condone such brutality. But it's still localized. The scale doesn't compare. The, most of the, uh, the violence is regime instigated. And I apologize. Okay, it, right. The it, sector. I'm going to let Kamal West come the regime. in on this. Look, we're here not to prosecute what happened in 82. We're here, we're looking at what's happening right now, and we're looking at the map of the Middle East, what will emerge after what is taking place in Syria. What is taking place in Syria is really not about Syria. The, what is taking place in Syria, it's a new map is being drawn for the Middle East. We know the American even the new Khan saying they lost Iraq. If you look at the new Khan from the Dick Cheney arrows, everybody is a crying wolf because they lost Iraq. They want to compensate in Syria. This will bring a war to the region. Nobody wanted that war in the region. Let's be mindful of the politics that is drawn. Okay, Every right. falling dictator I, has blamed a foreign conspiracy for his troubles at well, home. Perhaps it's Mubarak, Gaddafi, Bashar al-Assad today, case, elsewhere. There is no proof of foreign conspiracy for the moment. Okay, all right, I'm gonna take another question. I'm gonna take a question from the gentleman up there. Hello, um, yeah. I'm, uh, my question is for Mr. You're from where? From the Philippines. Okay. Oh, nice. My question is for Mr. Wakaf and for the side against the motion. Um, throughout the entire debate, your side has pretty much tried to divert the responsibility for the situation in Libya away from Mr. Uh, from Mr. Bashar. We're talking about Syria. Not, not Syria, Libya. Syria. Despite despite him despite him being the president of the of the republic, despite him being in charge of the government, you pretty much diverted the attention, the responsibility away from him. If that is the case, then who is responsible for the situation, and how can we put a stop to it? Okay. Who is responsible? The situation, first of all, is about creating a sort of chaos in Syria, and it's not about killing people. Now, obviously, the Syria has, forever, for, for, for a long time now, has not been the most cooperative state with regards to American interests and Western interests in the region. That's evident. Now, is that an opportunity for someone to come and destabilize the situation? I mean, what happened in Tunisia and Egypt? Yes, it is. And somebody has, uh, you know, invested heavily in this. The Guardian, the, the, the London-based newspaper, the other day said, President Assad is, is the most, you know, expensive person on earth because the level of money that was spent on toppling him is unimaginable. Now, uh, wish, I mean, anybody who doesn't really know... So it's fact because it came from The Guardian? No, but is it not fact because The Guardian said it? Of course. You know, it is, it is a notion... You that believe everything wrong. suddenly you read in the newspapers? No, bit, I do, I no, do a bit of scrutiny, but I like that, that particular one. You, be, you believe the more. things you want to believe. Okay. Don't, right. don't you think Western nations spent more trying to topple Gaddafi and now they're actually bulking at, uh, at intervention? The, 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 notion, the notion that this is driven from the outside... They spent, is, they is, spent is, more is, Libyan is, lives than Syrian lives. That's what they spent. It's insulting to the Syrian people. They've been going out. They've been actually resisting violence. They actually are debating whether foreign interventions is the right thing or well, not. I would and you're cool actually, down a and you're bit. actually I mean, blaming you know, all this on the, on the Western conspiracy. The West was actually at Bashar's door only a few months ago. The, the, the lines were open again. They were, Hillary Clinton was talking about Bashar as a potential reformer. He should lead the transition. This is the reality of where the West so stood that's, that's three so months and so the West three months and the, the best West Syrian people. Is that oh, what you're saying? Oh, why not for the oh, Qatari oh. people? Why not for so the Saudi why people? Why really change? What really changed? The Americans were like hugging Bashar al-Assad for a very long time. What really changed? The level, the American the level, could, the couldn't level get of a violence, contract with the, the Iraqi state the Arab Iraq. world. The is that what the happened, Arab world. my friend? The, the, the 19 countries is that approved that the happened? sanctions today are not lackeys of the West. Look, They're all you, like us. I can tell you why the Americans were, were happy with Bashar. Because we were silent. We, the Syrian people, were silent. And now we are paying the price for being silent for so long. But now we have spoken. And they have to listen. Let me remind you of one thing. Just put conspiracy theory. Okay, briefly, because I want to go on to the next question. Put conspiracy theory on the side. Madeleine Albright visited Bashar and sat with him in private in 2000 uh, when the, uh, the, uh, during the funeral. And people think that that was a conspiracy theory, that Madeleine okay, Albright all right. said, we 
uh, we, could, we support you to become president. Okay, I'm going Let's to take, not talk about conspiracy theory. I'm going to take some questions for this side of the debate. Does anybody have a question for this side of the debate? Is your, is your you, sir? Uh, I'm from Cairo, Egypt. And uh, my question is, if you really want to establish a good argument, I think we need to go back to the main key word in today's motion, which is resign. Resign, professionally speaking, is about that you were not able to deliver, that you were not able to do your job. So one of the job descriptions of Bashar al-Assad is that he is the commander of the military, the commander of the Syrian Arab troops. And those troops, for the last nine months, they were not able to finalize a struggle with those aliens that they are coming and fighting them with a couple of rifles smuggled via the Jordanian or the Turkish borders. What I'm trying to say is that if you use this argument, I think Bashar al-Assad was not able to fulfill his uh, responsibilities and therefore he should resign. Thank you. Well, which, 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 is, which is basically your yeah, side of the argument, but for, diff but for different reasons. Yeah. Well, I mean... Was that a question, for God's sake? Well, <laughs> Bashar has not delivered anything for 11 years. I mean, opening one bank does, is not worth the lives of these, all these people. All he did, he reopened banks, closed back 40 years ago. For God's sake, what kind of development is that? He hasn't done anything as a president, and all he did was go and conspire outside Syria because basically he thinks there's a conspiracy coming towards him. So he has to go and conspire on everyone else. And he always used okay. the excuses of what's going on in but Lebanon, I just, in Iraq. I just want to interject. Come on, come on, Wesley. I just want to tell you. Wasn't Syria under sanction from the United States since 1979? Wasn't the sanction was tightened in 2003? Wasn't the sanction was tightened in 2006? Wasn't Syria was under because supported the resistance in Lebanon? Was the devil in the, in the, in the, in the Middle what's, East? What's your point? The point is, despite all of that, Syria succeeded in building some economic in, in, in the country. They built the country. Look at the GDP from when Bashar so Assad came. So it's an came. Econo economic success from 12 billion now? to close to 50 billion economy. In he built a job, years, look his, at the roads no, no. in Syria, in his first look at years, the infrastructure no, no. In, in, in Syria, his first five look at the economy, okay, the okay, you made your point. You made your point. So his, what are you saying? You what made do you your want? Point. Somebody his under first, sanction? Excuse me. In his first, Will you let somebody else speak? Yes, please. How Papa. kind. Thank in you. His Thank first, you. In his first three years in office, the growth rate was zero. Do you know that? No, no, it's no not, it was it's zero. Not the growth and there rate. were no troubles then. We didn't have the Iraq war. He never what delivered. Year? He promised change from day one, and he never did anything That's about it. That's not true. And after, what's I mean, the source of your look look answer? Your, me one question. Look at the IMF. Okay, you to have be, a chance to speak. Well, Please just let him. He's saying something wrong. Okay, and then, wrong. then I will give you a chance to answer. Answer it. me one question. How do you think much more time he needs? How long do you think he'll be in office for? More what is given. What I'm saying what does that, mean? that if the Israeli were giving 10 years, Israel, Israel destroy Lebanon. Before you clap, Israel destroy Lebanon. Still Gaza under the blockade. The Arab gave it so since how many 2002 more years? How many and more nothing Let happened. Let him speak. If the, if the Arab League were very kind and they gave him one week, couldn't they give more? Is that what we're looking for? Are we looking? We know where we're heading okay. in the All region? Right. No, I didn't know the, ro okay. the, the role models for Bashar are the Israelis, by the way. We have, a, we have a lot of models for the Arab the Arab 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 I'm going to move on to another. with the Israelis. Can they be kind with, with your, their own people? With your indulgence, I'm going to move on to another question. There's a lady up there on the right. Yes, you. You've had your hand up. For, yes, you. Hi. You who are opposing the motion keep saying that this revolution is not about Syrians, but these are Syrian people that are protesting, first of all. Um, second of all, in regard to the fact that you keep saying that it's not about the Syrians, it's a regional matter, what do you make of um, Netanyahu's recent statement that he disapproves of the Arab Spring? Good. Well, I think that the second question is, is a little off the mark. Let's take the first one. Am I yeah, um, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. This is about Syrians. However, did, any, did anyone prevent any other stakeholder, regional or international, to jump onto the wagon? No. 
Yes, it was the Syrians who went onto the streets, that's for sure. And it was the Syrians who sacrificed their bloods and the bloods, whether on the civilian side or on the military side or even on the uh, armed group side, yes. But other players and other stakeholders are benefiting from this big time. That's for sure. We cannot, the, Syria is not isolated, is it? Now, with regards to Netanyahu's thing, was he meaning Syria or was he meaning Egypt? No, he yeah, let, let's, let's just take the, the question I wanted to respond to the yeah. first point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you make of the videos of Bashar's forces uh, torturing protesters, making them kiss Bashar's picture, yeah. and telling them there is no God but Bashar and there is no God but Mahir? Do you think this anyone, is about the Syrian people? Do you think anyone in Syria you can get that the his hands? Do you that? think anyone in, in Syria or any person in Syria can get his hands on a pair of military outfit? Of course they can. That's absurd to even assume that. Why do you think that? it's absurd? Why do you think it was not changed? In a changed? country that has Stay. the most powerful security apparatus, how I don't come, believe it's How easy can to you authenticize all the videos that are there as being true? Sorry? So how, can, can, how can you do the same with the other videos? How can you be sure that that you, video is you? true? That's the question yeah, he's asking. Yeah, and it's genuine. How, how, how do you can I be sure that video is not true? I see a I mean, man don't being you abused the and the video's told authenticity? to kiss Bashar al-Assad's picture. The same applies to the ambush you were talking about in Banyas. It happened. You, if we start down this line, then there's nothing true in Look, Syria. Look, I, I went but to Syria we back in July. Let, let, him, let him speak. We are ending let up speak. with 5,000 we'll people losing their lives, yes. including soldiers who were, who were shot in the back for disobe disobeying orders of killing civilians. I, okay. I have yes. to disagree. Yes. Our, our I, went, I went to Syria, Syria in July, and I crossed Banyas. And on those bridges where the, where the ambush took place, there are still, and I think until now, gun posts made by the army so that this thing that happened does not repeat again. Now, saying that the army is not attacked is basically, you know, not believing all the funerals you say on television. These are official funerals by their comrades. They're taken, wrapped in the Syrian flag, and they're taken to their mosque, sometimes with not a full body. Okay, you're not happy. I'm not happy at all. There are dead bodies. There are children with nail bombs in their bodies. Can you explain to me how my family's neighbors in Syria received a dead body with nails drilled into their body, with their nose cut off, with their ears cut off? I have more than 50 off? relatives in Homs, madam. Sorry? I have more than 50 relatives in Homs. And they have been under, so lying. under threat from the armed groups from day one. Okay, my, my family has also been under threat from armed groups which were released by prisons by your regime. Why do you think? Why do you think to they were released by the prison? Why to cause havoc, to show the people that without the, without the regime there will be conflict, there will be sectarian war, there will be civil war. So these prisons were free. These prisoners were told to go and create havoc. Sectarian my chants family were, were also heard in Banyas from the first but I Friday. You, these okay. no, please speak at once, the, please, please. I guarantee you these armed groups are not the same people that returned my neighbor's dead body Okay, to let, let, let him Madam, reply Madam, to sectarian, that. Sectarian chants were heard in Banyas on March the 18th, the first Friday of the so-called revolution. And it was not Bashar al-Assad people who shunted them. Okay. Sectarian issues are there and that they are steered, I believe, by outsiders. And some people okay. in Syria are falling for that. You this make is that a point. Syrian revolution and it's insulting to keep insisting that this is an outside revolution. Okay. There is Thank a Syrian element, much. but you it's not point. like that. Thank you very much. Some questions for those who are supporting the motion, please. If you don't have a question for them, I'm not going to take it at we the moment. I will do, tonight, so. but we need, we, to put to some, we, need, we need to put some pressure on these guys. Okay. Do you have a, do you have a question for these? Yes, I do. Side? Okay. Um, as we can see, there's, there's support on both sides in whether he should resign or whether he should not resign. But I think something we need to understand is that Either way, there are people below Assad who are, who are making these killings happen. I mean, so my question is, what will one man resigning make as a difference? We don't want him to resign on his own. We want the whole regime to go with him. Let me tell you this. Bashar al-Assad's presence right now is a threat to the Syrian state. Because we believe in the institutions, we believe in the army, which is a national institution. It's not his institution, though he's trying to do it his own. 
And because we believe in other institutions, he has to go and take out the bad guys with him. They all have to go, including his brother Maher, and his brother-in-law Asif, and his cousin Atif Najib, and the rest. Everyone who have blood on their hands have to go with him. But because we are talking about his resignation tonight. I think you actually asked a very good question, and this, this is the point that very few people are willing to engage with. The regime is not a few people at all. It is about a way of thinking and how you change that. And if these 5, 10, 20, 100 people resign, nothing will change, because this is a culture of how people do, go about doing their business. So what is really needed to change is the system itself, not this face or that face. Thank you very much for that question. And, and 11 years of Bashar al-Assad give you hope that he's able to do that? He had 11 years to actually enact political reforms. Do you think he would have done better, Emil? Pardon? Do you think he would have I'm, done better, Emil? I don't think. I, I think they're very, this very capable. This guy was attacked from day one. This guy was under position. attack okay. from day one. Okay. Who, can, can you, who, can, can who can lead the reconciliation inside the country, have a moderate discourse, can actually stretch their, their hand to the, the Alawite community and others that are very concerned about what's happening right now. I don't see that Bashar al-Assad and his, his clique are able to lead, uh, to get to that point where they're actually reconciling with most of the population. You have to understand the way in Syria people perceive this matter. Some people actually in Syria think that the president is protecting them from, uh, from these armed groups, I'm afraid. And they happen to be the majority. And I think they, are say, they say that this president has done a very good job. Look at what happened in Libya. What, 30 times the number of dead? Okay, I'm going to take a question from the lady in the yellow shirt up there. Um, good evening. Um, I have a question for the prop team. You're from where, please? Uh, Lebanon. Uh, so, uh, if Syria becomes a democracy and President Assad resigns, uh, who do you think will take the power? The Sunnis, the Shiites, or the Alawites? You, you mean in, in Lebanon itself? Or? No, 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 in Syria. In Syria, I think. Well, in Syria, we never had this language in politics before Assad came to power. In Syria, everyone can reach the highest position in the country. And it has always been like this. Yeah, but she's asking who you think is going to take over. So Whoever is elected by the people. We want Syria. a democracy. Can answer, I can't determine the future president. It has to be determined by the people. We need a, a transitional government that will lead us into democracy, that will uh, run elections, and then we have an elected president. It's, it's as simple as that. The, one piece of advice from a, a fellow Lebanese. Um, Syrians, don't replicate the Lebanese system, work on a national identity, reconcile, don't divide jobs uh, depending on sex, that's the way forward. And, excuse me, I just have one more question. Uh, what do you th how will this affect the countries around Syria, like if, if he doesn't resign? If he doesn't or if he does resign? Oh, no, excuse me, if he does resign. If he does resign, believe me, it's going to be a peaceful region, I, I'm telling you, especially in Lebanon. Come on, uh, No, no, I, I've heard that uh, this will have a big impact on Lebanon. And just, just because the Syrians want him to leave, that doesn't mean that other countries have to be um, inflicted in a, in a war, let's say, if, if they didn't agree like, with what the citizens want. I just want to know if this has an impact, because here we're saying that this will have an impact on the countries like Lebanon, for example, and you're saying that would be extremely peaceful. Okay, come on, Wazne, do you want to have a... Yes, I, um, I think that the future, if this situation go into this chaos, it's going to go into very bleak. We're looking at a situation similar to Afghanistan in Syria. I think the situation, if a sectarian war, will spill to Lebanon and to the region, and nobody can stop it. And I don't think those people who supply supplying weapons to Hamas from Lebanon can expect uh, another, you know, uh, no reward for their action. You sound like someone who, get, who has information on what's being planned if Bashar goes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I have seen my it, my, I have seen it, my, my friend. I have, who's planning No, no, no. This? I have seen it in Afghanistan, what happened to it. No, I've seen people in Iraq, how they get killed. Yeah. I've seen because how the only people foreign, destroyed. The only I've seen what happened in Afghanistan. By the way, the only foreign intervention we have in Syria today happen. is the Iranian intervention. Are you hinting at that? What? Are you hinting at the Iranians trying to create some trouble in Syria? 
I, I just want an answer for that. No, it's not the Iranian trying to create trouble, but I think other Persian Gulf are afraid of the Iranian influence in the region, and they are afraid of that road connection between Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, because they think this is will destabilize the region. Okay, all right. I'm going to take a question from the lady in the front row. Hello, my name is Lena. I'm from New York City. In the event of Assad's resignation, um, what will be done to prevent the rise of Islamic fundamentalism in the event of a weak government? Amir Khakayan, would you like to take that? Well, one thing we've learned uh, is that um, Islamist movements are best constrained when they're engaged, not when they're met with brutal force. You have to engage them, and they are a defining feature of Syrian society. The Assad regime tried to, uh, tried to crush them in 1982, and they're still around. It shows that they're a legitimate actor. They have to be engaged, and they have also to understand that there are rules of the game, that there are, there are minorities, there are others that are concerned about this. We have an example in Tunisia, An Nahda. An Nahda elected more women than the liberal forces in October during the elections. Everybody was so worried that this would be a, a conservative a retrograde group. Well, it didn't happen. Islamist forces need to be tested. They have to be engage and fought at the ballot box. Okay, before we come to the vote, I'm going to ask each of the speakers to crystallize their arguments in one sentence, and we're going to go round the table, and then we're going to vote. So, Abed, if you'd like to start, just one sentence, please. I think the Syrian people deserve better than a bunch of guys who kill us because there are massacres everywhere else. Emil Hokayem. Bashar al-Assad has underperformed for 11 years. Why give him the benefit of the doubt? Khaled Wazni, one sentence. I think we need healing, we need reconciling, and we need more patience, and the time is to give it, or we have to pay a heavy price in the future. Okay, Amar Wakaf. When the majority of Syrians really want Bashar al-Assad to go, we'll let you know about it. Okay, we have reached the point in the proceedings we're going to vote on the motion that this House believes President Assad must resign. Let me just explain to you how the voting machines work, if you haven't used them before. If you want to vote for the motion, that's the side represented by those on my right, you will press in a moment button one. If you want to vote against the motion, that is the side represented by those on my left, it's button two. Whichever button you want to press, would you please do it now? There is the vote. 91% for the motion, 9% against. The motion has been resoundingly carried, one of the largest majorities I think we've ever had in our 58 long series of the Doha debates. So all I have to do is to thank our distinguished speakers. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you to you, the audience, for your questions. The Doha debates will be back again in a month's time. Till then, from all of us on the team, have a safe journey home. Thanks for coming. Good night. Thank you.